Hello there. So, today we're perfecting my lemon drizzle cake. It's nice, simple to make, and uh, most people can make it, even my friends could make it if they realise how easy it is, and they don't like cooking or baking or whatsoever. So, we're just going to run over the ingredients quickly before we get into it. You're going to need 175 gram of self-raising flour. You're going to need 175 grams of caster sugar, so preferably the golden caster sugar. You're also going to need it's probably around about 100, well I say probably, you're going to need 100 grams of butter. Uh, it's up to you which butter you choose. So I've just gone for this one because it says perfect cakes on there. Best one I really picked up. But if you want to go for expensive stuff, that's fine. If you want to go for the dog shit cheap stuff, that's absolutely fine too. So as well as your caster, your flour and your butter, you're going to need two eggs. And you're also going to need six tablespoons, I have to get this right, six tablespoons of milk. And uh, one teaspoon, that's one teaspoon of baking powder. And that's just to give it some fluffy texture. When you've got all those ingredients, mix the shit out of it. Just mix the living shit out of it until it's just a great big mess of cake mix. You're also going to need two lemons. Now the reason I've left that to last is because all I want to do is I want you to grind the rind off the lemons. So when you've got the lemon rind, just pop it into the mix that you've already got, the lovely fat cake mix, and then mix the lemon rind into that as well. What we're going to do is we're going to jump straight ahead to some mixing because everyone wants a montage for cooking, nobody wants to see it on a slow motion, D.B. Smith, you never really make any money for it. So, okay, I'm going to start making the cake mix and remember that is just everything in a big bowl and mix the shit out of it. So as you can see, I'm uh, mixing the shit out of it, well I say I'm mixing the shit out of it, obviously it's a little bit tough. In there so far we've got the flour, we've got the butter and we've got the sugar. Okay, so I'm just going to add the uh, milk to it and then the eggs. So, one egg, two eggs. Now we've got the two eggs in there, and again, we're just going to mix the shit out of it. It's a bit difficult to do with one hand on the camera phone, so I'm going to press pause at that minute now. It's the kind of consistency you're looking for in the cake mix. Obviously, there's uh, most of the lumps are nearly gone out there. I've still got the lemon rind to add into there, but once I get that another quick beating for, I'd say, five, ten minutes, it'll be nice and just so smooth with the lemon rind in there. And you obviously you probably notice a taste difference and smell difference uh, already when you put the lemon in, because it's going to be quite per, uh, potent. Okay, so next in lemons. There's probably going to be an easy way to do this, but I just go for the old-fashioned way of butchering it. So uh, all we want is the lemon rind, so a great bit of lemon up. Now remember, as much as you can from these two lemons, because it's the rind that's really going to give the cake the flavour. It's the lemon juice that you're going to need later on for the icing. So uh, once you've got all the rind off here, then feel free to keep the lemons on the side. The lemon rind. Now, all we've got to do is whack the shit into uh, the cake mix. So the lemon rind cake mix. Once it's in there, again, all we're going to do is mix it in a little bit. So this is the important time now, because we want to get as many lumps out as possible. So it might be that you only mix it for about five minutes earlier to get it nice and smooth. This is going to be the proper one. So as soon as I put this camera phone down and use both hands, I'll be able to whip the crap out of this for a good 10 minutes until it's nice and smooth there's no lumps in there. So just to recap at this stage, it was 175 grams self-raising flour, 175 grams golden caster sugar, one teaspoon of baking powder, 100 grams of butter. Is that everything? Of course you want the lemons. So there's two of them. There's going to be two eggs and also going to be six tablespoons of milk into the mix. All into a bowl. Beat the crap out of it. Beating the crap out of this cake. We're beating the crap out of this cake. <laughs> That's what we wanted, lovely creamy texture, it's nice and smooth, there's not lumps in there now. So this is just about ready to go into the oven. We haven't talked about ovens yet, have we? Well, I've got a shit oven. It's, uh, well, it's not too bad, it does me. It's an electric oven though, I'd prefer to have a gas one. So all we're going to do is we're going to whack this up to between 200 and 250, depends on the oven, uh, how much do you trust it. I'm okay with mine, I know I can whack it all the way up to 250 at the moment and it'll take ages to get hot. So yeah, it's the oven you need on anywhere between 200 and 250. I'd say just be safe, do 220, okay? When you've got it ready for the oven, it's going to go into a greaseproof tray. I line mine just be on the safe side. 
leave it in there for about 20 to 30 minutes until it's firm to the touch and you can poke it with something like I don't know, a shish kebab or a fork and it just bounces back it non sticks to the fork. I'm going to have to go because the oven's there ready, the cake's ready to go in and someone at the door. Right, I've just put the I've just put the cakes in the oven. There they are, two of them there yeah, because I'm yeah. greedy. It's uh, at the top temperature on my oven, but my oven's shit, 250. So remember, I said between 200 and 250. Righty, so we're back at it. It's been probably about half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, I did have to leave the cake a little bit longer than I thought I'd need to because of a emergency with the power on the street. It's not really good when the cooker goes off halfway through cooking, so I've had to put it on. Uh, for a bit of additional time. That's why when we turn on to look at the cakes in a minute, they might look a little bit golden brown. So uh, I put these down as a filled cake, but I'm still going to go through the recipe. Hopefully after this video I'll do another super quick, super, super quick montage of one that actually turns out really nice. But uh, while the cakes are in this state, let's have a look at them. I'm just going to have to pause you for that second. But unfortunately, due to the power cut and uh, the cooker going off and then on again, you can see that these cakes are actually, yeah, they've risen a little bit and then they've sunk back in again. That's on both of them. Uh, so, what I'm going to need to do is let these cool down for a little bit. And while I'm letting them cool down, the next thing I'm going to do is the icing for the top. So like I said, I'm going to persevere with these cakes. Cast your minds back to when I had the lemons earlier on. So, remember, I grated the shit out of these, but I needed the rind for the cake mix itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually juice these. So there's two lemons, this one and that one. That could be the same lemon for all you care. In fact, let's do this properly. The two lemons that I ground up, see they are both real. I'm going to juice them in a minute. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to juice the shell of them basically. You can probably see the theme going on here. Once they're juiced, I'm going to mix the uh, lemon juice and it should probably be about a quarter of a cup. I'm going to mix it with about 50 to 100 grams of caster sugar again. Uh, just so it gets nice and thick and stiff. Then I'll probably we'll have to put some more sugar in because I just made that measurement up. But uh, what we're looking for is like a sludgy mix. So I'll show you the sludgy mix before it goes on the cake. So remember that's just the lemon juice and some more caster sugar. I'll say 50 to 100 grams now but I'll, I'll actually weigh it out as I'm doing it so I can give you an exact figure. But it's just we're after like a slushy mixture of a texture okay. Now well, without turning this into gardening time uh, well, I just want to point out that uh, once you've use the lemons to the fullest, you see there's no juice in there whatsoever, the skin's almost gone. What you can do with them is just put them in your flower beds. Now particularly I've got some herbs in the back garden and they're forever getting cat piss or cat shit on. So I've just changed them. So what I'm going to do with these lemon halves is just put them into my uh, into the pots that the herbs in. The cats don't like the citrusy lemon uh, zestiness of it. So it just makes them aware that they can't poop and shit and piss everywhere or on your lovely little herbs. So waste not one, I say. I don't want to turn this into River Cottage, but yeah, just use the lemon pieces, put them into your flower bed, put them around your trees, or just put them in your hair pots and save them from uh, dirty, shitty, pissy cats. I am a cat owner, by the way, but cats are pissy and shitty everywhere anyway. So, yeah, love you. If you remember, I didn't give you the exact measurement of caster sugar that I was putting into the lemon juice to soak it all up. So uh, what I've done is I've actually weighed it all out, and it is uh, 100 grams. If you've got a little bit extra lemon juice in there, say you're using like two huge lemons, just add another 25-50 grams of uh, caster sugar into it. What you eventually want is something that resembles this yucky sludge that I'm about to turn the phone around to. So there's my uh, thick sugary lemony glue. You see there's a bit of lemon pulp in there still. That's absolutely fine. All we're going to do in a minute is spread it onto the cake. So because the music's a little bit loud, I'm just going to turn this off for a couple of seconds. There we go. So, with my uh, cakes ready, and my thick sugary lemony gloop, all I'm going to do is pour it over the top of the cakes. Now, if you had like a, a cooking disaster like I did, where the oven went off and your cakes have gone all different shapes, it's important to spread it around. So, when you pour it onto this one, for example, because it's a great big dip you've got here, make sure it spreads everywhere first. It doesn't matter if someone sits into there, it forms a pool, as long as the rest of the cake is covered by the lemon. What you'll notice as well, as you pour it onto the cake, and I'm only doing it really gently here at the moment, you'll see the top of the cake it will start crumbling away. That's absolutely fine, it's just the cake absorbing the moisture from the lemon and letting the sugar absorb through the cake. So I'm just going to continue with this. I know what you're thinking, that's going to take bleeding ages to do, so in my house it's the way that we do it. Some for that cake, and some for that cake. 
So both cakes have got some lemon drizzle. Like I said, uh, it's important that it doesn't just pull there, that you spread it around. So I'm going to be a little bit creative now and be a bit of a, let's say, a cooking tart. I'm just going to spread that all around. Like I say, it doesn't matter if it pulls as long as the rest of the cake gets some lemon drizzle on it as well. That's right, all the way into the edge of the cake there. There we go, it doesn't matter all the, sh the stuff that's going down the sides there. And same on this cake, just getting it all spread around. And then we'll sort the pooling issue that it's got. Let's get all over the cake. So, that's two cakes, and all I seem to have done is made a cake base and then poured some lemon and sugar up the top. You're thinking, is that that simple? Yeah, it is. Once you've done that, just basically leave the cakes on the side. You'll notice that with time, they start crystallising, so the top will get all shiny and stickier. This pool that's over here, it's obviously all spread out, but that will uh, be absorbed by the cake in a second or two. Uh, let it cool down, I'd say about 15 minutes, and then if you just uh, spoon it out with a nice spatula, enjoy your cake. I'll show you another picture of it just as it's about to come out to be eaten. So as you can see, I've started dispensing the cake now. And uh, as you're cutting up, I know I'm making a bleeding mess of it there, but I've got a backup cake and another cake in the oven, so it's absolutely fine. So uh, what I do is, if you cut up into lovely little squares like that, you can see that they make an ideal little snack. They're lovely and fluffy, and it's the sugar and the lemon juice that drizzles through it that gives it a unique texture and a lovely uh, sharp taste. Mmm. And this cake is good. Mmm. 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 As I said to you earlier, I don't like to fail, so without further ado, I'll just prove what colour the cake should have been before it bent because of the power cut. It's more of a uh, light brown, uh, almost a, like, I don't know, a gingery brown, to, to give it a bit of slander there, if one loves a good ginger. But it's like a, just a, a light brown on top of there. Uh, in comparison to the other cake, which was a little bit darker on top, so obviously as the sugar's gone on that one and settled in, it's made it look a little bit more sponge-like, but... Uh, Based on the evidence, after cutting it up, it is absolutely lovely still, so don't worry too much about the, uh, the colour on top of it, that just adds to the effect. But realistically, that was the colour I was aiming for when I first uh, started baking this evening. But there you go, a lovely lemon drizzle cake that you can cut into lemon drizzle squares and serve up. Realistically, the cooking time is half an hour to 45 minutes, unless the cooker goes off for some strange reason, in which case your cakes might burn. But yeah, uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes, minimal ingredients, the one thing that you probably will need to get from the shops is a lemon because I don't know how many people keep lemon around, but as long as you've got self-raising flour, some caster sugar, some butter, some eggs, and a little bit of milk, you're more or less all the way there anyway, all you need then after that is your lemons. I probably forgot some of that, haven't I? Baking powder as well, but lemons is the main thing that you're going to need to get.